Welcome to Reachable TV. I'm Rachel April Phillips. I'm a branding, marketing, product launch expert and career advancement specialist. And today we've got guests with us, Omar Zach Phillips, which is also my husband, who is a business coach and a life coach and an author. And we've invited him on the show today because we're going to be talking about entrepreneurship and what that really means and what you need to have in your bow to become an entrepreneur. So he works as a business consultant and he's worked as a business consultant before. He works with men mainly, but also people kind of getting their minds right and getting them in gear to kind of get into the right frame of mind to have a great and fantastic life. So what better person to invite on Richard Ball today to help us talk about the show. So welcome Omar, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, sweetheart, Mwah, for coming to the show today. It's quite hard to get him to come to the show. He's got three days off work. <laughs> so excited. And so obviously I thought I'd use this time as well to try and get some videos done so I can use it and share with you guys to help you with your business. So today, I'm gonna ask him a couple of questions. We're just gonna dialogue as well and we're going to talk about entrepreneurship and what it really means and what you really need to have in your skills to be an entrepreneur. So the first question is, what kind of person should become an entrepreneur? Mm. What do you think? Okay, it's quite an interesting question because you'll find among the sphere of entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. a lot of different types of people actually are entrepreneurs yeah. and there isn't really one specific sort of personality type or um, specific kind of person but really any person who in their heart of hearts comes to that place where they realize they want to be in a sense their own boss mm -hmm. they want to take life in their own hands and they want to use their gifts their skills their sort of business acumen their ability mm -hmm. to, um, to to do business to generate an income and to, uh, to, to to start a venture on their own so really I think the main impulse or the main thing, the main kind of person, the person who has a dream and a vision that they want to implement um, as, as their income, yeah. as their business. Mm. And I would add to that, an entrepreneur is someone that wants to work for themselves, yeah. that doesn't want to work a 9 to 5 job. Mm. Now we're not saying that you straight away leave your 9 to 5, like I've mentioned in a lot of my videos, I didn't leave my 9 to 5 as a teacher straight away, mm. I went part time and then I cut down my hours till I started having an income coming in from my entrepreneurial business. So someone that wants to go out on a limb on their own and start something great, start something different, either that be a create a product or a service or you know something that you want to leave for your children, you want to build it into a company, a family company and make it like a limited or a sole trader. So that's what I would class as an entrepreneur. So that's the kind of person I would say an entrepreneur is, would you agree? Yeah, someone who has a dream and a vision mm. of offering some kind of um, service or product, yeah. um, bringing that to market, um, and who basically wants to, who, who's got good at imp actually implementing it, yeah. get on with it and do it, that's and an entrepreneur. Mm. Getting the action and, and seeing yeah. it come through. Just thinking of it or dreaming of it is all, it's it's not it's you can't just action. call yourself an entrepreneur, you've got to actually every day putting some kind of action Start to, to do it. it. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. brilliant. So the second question then will be, what skills should be identified as a person that wants to become an entrepreneur? So what skills do you think an individual person needs to have mm -hmm. to become an entrepreneur? Okay, so there's a bit of a range, mm -hmm. depending obviously on what the product or service is. So therefore there should be some level of gift or talent specifically related to the offering of that gift or of that, sorry, the gift. Some okay. gift related to offering that service or product. Okay. Um, and then some level of business understanding is going to be of great um, importance. So whether it be the ability to sell, to sell yourself and to sell your brand and your product and your, um, your service. Um, also some kind of understanding of the marketplace 
um, some desire to kind of get into the marketplace, understand your market, your competition, um, your customer, um, all those factors. So the skills you're going to need really are the skills to be able to, are business skills, basic business skills, identifying your market, identifying your competition, um, knowing how to market your product mm. to those people, mm. um, knowing how to manage and uh, monitor your finances to some degree, knowing how to delegate some of those things to people who can do those for you, um, or to be able to, to you know, acquire the help when, yeah. when, when necessary. I mean, that's great. I mean, that's what I normally say in my videos and also say to my clients, is mm. that if you can't do all the things, all the skills that you need to to get your business off the ground, then delegate, outsource the relevant skills, the relevant help that you need mm. to get your business off the ground. Because a, a lot of people get stuck thinking if they don't have all the skills, or it's going to take them two years, three years to for them to develop that skill. Yeah. Then by the time they take um, learn that skill, it'll be too late, or they might lose the motivation to start the business. Yeah. So what I always say to my clients is start. I mean, do a basic research like a business plan. You need to get a business plan out there, mm -hmm. and then obviously, like Omar talked about your finances, all the things that you develop, the basic business skills that you need. But the other ones that you don't need, just start the business. And as you go along, you can outsource it, or you can develop yourself to a place where you can get that business going. You don't have to have everything 100% perfection, not to the T. Dot every I cross every X, every T, all that kind of thing, just get started. I mean, when I started out in business, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. And I was still, as I'm going on in business, I adapt and I change. A lot of people might not agree with that, but at the end of the day, who cares? It's your business, you're the one in the business, you're the one running it, and it doesn't really matter what other people think you should be doing or not should be doing. You have to spend every day in your business, so you have to be happy in your business. So. And the whole thing about being an entrepreneur is, giving your existence more freedom, yeah. more freedom of expression, more freedom in, in as many ways as possible. But at the same time, I think it really helps if you adopt like a mindset of a, of a learner, yeah. where you're prepared to learn so many things. Because I believe on the majority of people's entrepreneurial journey, there's mm. going to be so many steep learning curves um, and just a kind of flexibility and a preparedness to learn as many things as possible, especially those which are necessary. You know, again, like we said earlier, you learn to delegate what you can to, um, you know, because your time is going to be important. stretched. It's mm. going to be important. Two mm. things you spend, your time and your money, money <laughs> you know, um, and your energy, you know. So, so think about, mm. think about how much energy do I have? Mm. How much time do I have? How many resources do I have uh, before you step into any venture? Okay, brilliant. And so the third question, what skills are needed to run your own business? We mm. talked about the skills to identify for someone to become an entrepreneur, but what skills do you think are needed to run your own business? Mm -hmm. Tenacity. Okay. You know. Um, now describe tenacity. Yes. So, you know, business, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, is just the ebb and flow of day by day, day by day business life. You know, um, I've worked in various different environments, various different offices, various different shops, various different places over the course of my career. And you know, business is just a ticking over the day-to-day -day ebb and flow of life. And you have to get into those routines and rhythms of, say, sweeping the outside of your shop, tying up all the uh, the merchandise, um, you know, doing the till, doing the, um, the the books, doing the various different things, taking a stock check, taking in the delivery. All the different little things have to be done, and you know, they're not necessarily the romantic things, they're not the exciting things, but they're part and parcel of what makes the ship. Um, keep moving and the wheels keep turning um, and I think that that's a really important um, skill to actually just have the tenacity to keep doing the day by day things mm -hmm. that really do matter that make a lot of difference um, you know and, and to make the, the culture that you set as the entrepreneur as the you know the, the, the spearhead of your business is what other people are going to follow so if you've got good day by day habits and the running of your business as other people begin to come on board as you begin to employ staff they kind of they fit into the slot of the culture that you're already beginning to put into motion. I mean, I like that. That's fantastic. Fantastic. Tenacity. Tenacity. Mm -hmm. I love that. Tenacity is such a great skill to have. Mm -hmm. I will add to that focus. Mm -hmm. You've got to be focused on your business. You've got to be focused on seeing your business, first of all, start up mm -hmm. and seeing your business grow. Because what tends to happen is if you don't see the results that you like to see at the beginning stages, 
you can get a bit despondent and get a bit discouraged that maybe you are in the wrong field and maybe you should not have started this business. What can make you nervous as well is if you started out your business with a lot of investment, if you borrowed too much money from the bank, from family members or whatever investors. place that you've gone into, the like angel investors, you know, I'm not saying that that's not a good thing, but for me, I like to build my business holistically. That might take a bit longer than normal businesses that have had investment into it, but I can sleep peacefully at night knowing that I don't owe anyone any money. I don't have to reach a certain target. I've got that target that I've set by myself, not set by someone else. The reason why I've gone down that journey is because I've been in debt before. My husband has been in huge amounts of debt and it's taken us probably six years to clear our debt and literally reduce all the debt. And we got into debt buying properties, trying to start a business, because I'm an entrepreneur, he's an entrepreneur. And I think I shared in my other video, in my Q&A slash tag getting to know us, that I was the kind of person who would go out there and borrow money and invest money. Some of the um, businesses went well, some of the businesses didn't do well whatsoever, but I still owed that money. I still had to pay that money back. So. I learned my lesson through that journey in my younger years that, you know what, when I start out in business again, I would do it holistically and try as much as possible not to borrow money from outsourced um, people and places and organisations so I'm not in, sh in stress. Mm -hmm. So that focus, basically I'm focusing on my business and I'm going to focus on the things that's going to help my business successful in the right area and quicker. And focus on your dreams as well. Yeah. Um, you know, because when you focus, when you when you make your dream your focus, it helps you to um, to chisel your your day by day activities mm. towards right. This is important to the dream. Mm. This isn't. Mm. So you kind of you cut off, you streamline your activities to what is going to bring you from A to B, um, and you just cut out the you know, the, the baggage and the extra things okay. that you're trying to get in the way. So any other things, I would say mm -hmm. my third one would be organisation. You mm -hmm. need to be able to organise and plan, and plan mm -hmm. your day. So obviously again, because when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have a boss above you saying, mm -hmm. this is the role, this is what you need to do every day, mm -hmm. can you sort this out by a certain time? You have to kind of take charge of yourself and take charge of your time. Mm -hmm. So organisation is really important and time management comes into play with that as well. So the Being your own boss is being your own boss. Mm -hmm. you have, somebody has to be the boss. So if you're going to be your own boss, yeah. you have to take charge of your own And life. if you're not comfortable of being a boss and you don't like giving orders, mm -hmm. and then that it also flows down to you don't like giving orders to yourself, mm -hmm. then you need to find someone who can body with you and who can make you accountable. Because then if you know that you're not comfortable in managing yourself, get a friend, get a colleague, get a family that you know that they will put that pressure on you to achieve your goals. Mm -hmm. So I will say um, time management and I will say organisation. Do you want any more, one more thing that you could give in the skills that mm -hmm. someone needs to become an entrepreneur? Uh, to, uh, skills that you need to, to run your own business. To run your own business, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. People skills. Oh, that's a great one. Mm. People skills. Very few businesses mm. don't require some level of personal interaction between you and others. Yeah. And if you're going to be a boss of any kind, um, you're going to need people skills to work effectively with employees, you mm. know, to not put them off um, at, at some stage along the way. You know, um, employees typically can look at jobs from a perspective of, you know, um, it's just a job, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? They don't necessarily have the same level of passion that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you've got the right kind of people skills, you can, you can make them up. become a family. Well, yeah, you can make them be, and then also you can bring them around you and get them, get them behind your vision. If you mm -hmm. convey your vision, if you, you know, then you convey to them that you care about your business and that you care about them and all those factors. But some mm -hmm. businesses don't have employee um, employees, mm -hmm. no. so you're going to still have to have business um, mm -hmm. customer care. Absolutely. And customer understanding when you yeah. deal with people when you have to sell your product or That's when right. you have to work online mm -hmm. so you need yeah. customer service it's, anyway. it's, it's right across the board mm. if you want to collaborate with other people in business you want to do joint ventures you want to um you need you need to buy stock you need to buy whatever you know it, so many different areas you're going to be interacting with other kinds of people um, and that flow the more you can learn how to work well with people to learn how to communicate with people to learn how to be genuine with people mm. um you know, people people quickly, you know, sense if you're not a genuine human being. Um, 
and, and you know all these kind of factors. Also, you need to be quite strong with people. You know, mm. you need to, have to learn how to be able to be, <laughs> you know, a person who isn't uh, put off by people, isn't intimidated by other people. Mm. Uh, don't allow people to walk over you. Mm. But at the same time, a person who can, um, you know, just a lot of people skills. Yeah, I mean, people you know skills. what? I think I'm going to do a video mm. on just how to become a good. Mm. How to develop a good business? Um, how to develop a good people skills? Yeah. So I'm gonna actually do a video on that. Actually, it's, important. it's really important. Yeah. Okay, the next question: Five top tips to maintain your business daily. What tips mm. would an individual person, you know, entrepreneur, mm -hmm. need to maintain their business daily? Mm -hmm. Five. <laughs> Five. So let's say number one. Number one. Keep the vision. Keep the vision. Okay, so. Stab, you know, as in establishing what is the vision, and like every single day coming back to that, that you know, right, what is the vision, what we're we doing. So that could be your business plan mm -hmm. if you've written something. That's mm -hmm. why I always suggest to my clients have a business plan mm -hmm. in place because sometimes people think, oh, well, I'm not borrowing funding, so I don't need a business plan. Mm -hmm. The business plan really is for yourself, mm -hmm. so you can have something to go back on, a document physical document you can go back on and read okay what is my idea what is my business what am I going to do daily who's my customers so a business plan is actually for you as well so I would suggest for you to have a business plan and that will help you with your vision yeah help you with remind your yourself of day, day basis why am I in business what's the vision what's the dream what am I seeking to accomplish and to obtain through this both you know uh, bigger picture monetarily for my own self uh, but also you know many of us in terms of running our own businesses, say you're running a cafe and it's your dream cafe, it's the, it's the thing that you always want to do, the, mm. you know, the layout, the, the type of food, it's the stuff that makes you excited, um, or whatever other type of business, if it's the stuff that makes you excited, you know, keep in mind the excitement, the things about doing those activities that you love and that you enjoy, because once you get into the ebb and flow, mm. it could be easy to lose sight of, actually, I, I love this. Yeah. Um, this makes me excited. And do some of the things that, you know, that motivate you. Uh, and perhaps even, you know, there's always that thing of delayed gratification. So perhaps in the day, try and get all the nitty gritty stuff out of the way so the rest of your day can be spent actually just enjoying doing those amazing tasks that got you to do this type of business in the first place. That's fantastic. Okay, tip two. Mm. I would say your mission statement, similar as your vision, but your mission statement, again, is what, it's, it's like, it's niching down even more your vision. Mm -hmm. Omar talked about your vision in the sense of what you do daily, what you started the business in the first place. Your mission statement is what's going to help you make money. Because when you kind of like can identify your mission statement, that will narrow down who your customers are and what you're providing as a service or what you're providing as a product to meet that need or that problem to your customers. And that's what a mission statement is. And I would say your mission statement is something that you need to focus on on a daily basis. Because when you focus on your mission statement on a daily basis, then you know when that client comes, you don't miss that client. Or when you know it's time for you to sell and offer your product, you're not going to miss it because you know that's the need that I need to meet and I'm meeting it with this product, I'm meeting it with this service, or I'm meeting it with who I am as an individual person. So your mission statement is something you should focus on on a daily basis. Mm. Tip three, what third thing do you think they will need to focus on on a daily basis to mm -hmm. grow their business? So um, I'm going to use an analogy of bricks and um, you know the, the, the piece by piece, if I was building a wall um, I'd have to sort of see, dig my foundation first, then begin to lay down the basic bricks and stuff and begin to build it up. So do the day-by-day -day little tasks that equate to the bigger picture. Mm. Um, you know, if you're doing a jigsaw, if you're doing anything, you have to just do the menial one at a time until that big picture begins to emerge. And it's the same in your business. You've got a dream for what your business is supposed to be, mm. but it's going to be a stage of one after another, lots of little individual tasks. So um, another tip to maintain your business on a daily basis is to just do those day-by-day -day things, get into the habit of just doing those regular practices that have to be done, yeah. kind of enjoying them, making them a part of your routine, yeah. making them a part of just, it just gets done. Whatever happens, it just, that gets done first, uh, and then we can go and do the exciting stuff. But really kind of just get on with the nitty gritty, the putting in the bricks of your business, building it a stage at a time, um, that's going to really, really help. Brilliant. And I would say tip four is to call everything down. Mm -hmm. That is so important. Mm -hmm. I used to be a very, very organised person until I had children. Mm -hmm. 
and my husband wasn't as organised as me. And now we've kind of come to the same level where we're both organised but in our different ways. I love jotting things down on a regular basis. I, I was saying to my husband the other day, I have dreams in boxes. Like, if, I, if I'm if i in a dream and I feel like my dream is taking me somewhere I don't want to go, I will stop the dream and literally grab myself and say, no, that dream is going to be in that box till I'm ready to have that dream. I can't do that. <laughs> and my, and I, I, I'm just like that. And I realised that actually what my subconscious is telling me is that that is a good skill to have in the sense that works for me. So I need to use that in my everyday life because even if I'm dreaming in boxes, that means actually that's a great skill for me to implement into my business because I haven't implemented it as much into my business. But the revelation through that dream is that I need to implement more recording things down and more organisation in the sense of making sure when I say I was going to ring that client, I'm going to ring that client. When I say I'm going to send something, I'm going to send something, make sure I do it. The time scale I give is 72 hours. Make sure within 72 hours I fulfilled that promise to that company or to that individual person. So record something down, record your stuff down. Also make sure that when someone says you've done something, you know you haven't. You've got a record of it, you know, that's why receipts and all those kind of things are important. Paperwork. Paperwork, especially when you start a business. Even when to do your taxes, when you have to do your tax return, all those kind of things. Even if they don't check, it's good to have a, a copy of whatever you need to just cover yourself um, in the law sense as well, also for your personal self as well. So the fifth tip that you should give to someone who should do daily to run their business. Mm. Fifth and last one. You said an interesting thing to me the other day when we were talking about fantasy. Okay, yes. And uh, you said, so when you say you close your eyes and you go to a little daydream, um, we're not just talking about random daydreams, we're talking about dreams that pertain to um, things you're building in your life, things that you want to see happen, you want to see transpire. Every time after you do that, do one little thing yeah. to begin to see that bigger thing happen. So you do one little thing from that fantasy. From that fantasy. Now we talked just a moment ago about doing the day-to-day -day bricks, but I'm also saying on top of just doing the day-to-day -day sort of other words, chores or sort of activities, mm. do one bigger thing or one thing that pertains to the big picture, the big dream that you have, <coughs> and say in your in your vision for your business, you know. Um, there may be lots of little counter dreams and visions, lots of it, things that you think, oh, this would be an exciting idea, mm. this would be an exciting project, mm. this would be an exciting um, addition. This is just for example. So, for example, obviously, you are anyone's in business to make money so they can have more time to spend with their family, they can go on more holidays to clear some debts off. Everyone has a different um, goal they have to start a business. But let's just say, for example, you want to drive a big Jeep that's worth £50,000. So, when I was talking to my husband about fantasy, so you go into the fantasy of a day job one day having this flashy card that you've always wanted. Now, Omar talked about your daily chores of doing the things that has to be done, like you know, sweeping the shop floor, checking that your um, your orders to your clients, all those kind of daily chores that needs to be done in a, in a business. Even if it's online business, you know the daily chores that you need to do online. But with your fantasy dream, what I was saying to Omar was that, okay, you dream of having a fantastic car. Mm -hmm. When you come out of that daydream, go to a showroom. Okay, spend an hour, spend two hours, even if you have to travel outside of your locality, go to a flashy showroom car room that has a Jeep in it and sit in that car, smell the car, touch the steering wheel, you know, lie down in that car, have a picnic in the car, work, you know, walk around the car, take a picture of yourself next to your dream car. Because what that you're doing to your subconscious as well is that you're telling your subconscious, you might not have it right now, but you are stimulating a belief in your belief system that one day you are going to have it. So then when you work on your everyday chores that you have to do, your subconscious is remembering the reason why you're doing that everyday chore. Like Omar said before, do all the um, gratification, delay gratification. That's the same as your daydreaming. It's that you're dreaming, but it's delayed gratification because you have to do what you're doing now. You have to, you're not in that daydream. But what you are doing when you invest in that daydream is that you are, it's like when you walk past the shop and you smell lovely fresh cooked um, bread or cake or pie, you know, that, oh, that draws you into that. terrible things you should never eat. <laughs> but it draws you in and you want to purchase that cake or that bread or that pie. That's the same with your daydream. It's luring you into your fulfilled dream. 
your daydreaming and you investing in it and the practical when you wake up as your daydream is what's going to allow you to get your end goal and result and this is something that we do but we've seen it work really really mm -hmm. well i mean the the life we're living right now the home we live in us meeting each other and being together our children it's all have come to being by us daydreaming it before we met Absolutely. and we live it every single day life is about having the fulfillment especially as an entrepreneur mm -hmm. you are creating the life that you Absolutely. want why be an entrepreneur if you're not going to get into that frame of mind of you living the life that you want mm -hmm. so those are the five tips for you to do into your business in your everyday life let's talk about the last question how to build a longevity in your business how to get your business from one year two year three year and five year what would you suggest mm. that they should implement at the early stages to help their business be a business that's here for the long haul so i guess in a sense it's in a nutshell putting together all the stuff we've just talked about yes um, and being serious about your business if you're in a situation where you you know you are starting your business but you haven't yet left your nine to five mm -hmm. be serious about each day doing the things necessary to you know to get that dream to fulfillment yeah. don't give up on your dreams don't you know don't let days go by you know uh, obviously there's going to be some days when it just didn't happen yeah. when the uh, brown stuff hits the uh, the worldly thing and you can't <laughs> you know you can't do anything about it so um <laughs> life is like that from time to time but you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to manage those days, but don't let it drag on, don't let it become a week or a month where mm. you've done nothing towards the building and maintenance of your business, you know. Yeah. Um, it's important to kind of, to, to, to keep at it so that you can build some longevity yeah. before you know it, you know, your, your business is up and running and yeah. things are taking place for you. And I would say thankfulness. Be thankful for what you have right now and be thankful for what you are going to have. You know, sometimes it's very hard to be thankful for what we have now. Mm -hmm. You know, when things break down, your car's not working, you don't have the resources. And uh, we've been broke to the point of not having even enough to eat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we were in that situation, we thought we were never going to get out of that situation. And thanks be to the Creator, the universe, but also ourselves. Because we got off our butts and said, you know what, we're not happy with our lives and we need to change it. But we know what one thing we were. We were thankful that we had a roof over our head. We were thankful for each other. We were thankful for our family, our children. And I think that also puts an aroma in your life. When you're thankful for what you have. I mean, you must have heard Oprah and lots of motivational people talk about thankfulness. You know, when you're thankful for what you have. It's like you're building your foundation and you're building your future on a good foundation rather than negativity. Negativity can't take, it can take you thus far. Like for example, someone said, a teacher or uh, a parent, you're never going to achieve anything, you're never going to be something. And you know, that can motivate you, you know, I'm going to prove to you, I'm going to show you, yeah, I'm going to do it. But that stops after a certain point, you know, you start getting depressed and it, it kind of clogs you up. But if you build your foundation on that, you know what, I'm thankful for who I am. I'm thankful that I woke up the next day. I'm thankful that I've got this opportunity to make a difference in my life. That's more powerful than having a negative feeling of I'm going to show you. Mm. You know, that's the experience I've had. You it's know, huge. it's so important. You know, I really gratitude is such a big thing. I hear a lot of people talk about it, and uh, I agree with some of the things that they say. Sometimes, mm. I, you know, I can't necessarily relate, mm. but I've realised on a day-to-day -day basis that when you know, you just take stock of the little things you have achieved, mm. the little things that you have got that are, are good. Mm. When you mentally take note of those things and just be grateful for them in your soul, like, you know what, I am really glad that I've got breath in my lungs yeah. today. That's kind of important. That yeah. helps a lot. Mm. Mm. Um, or the fact that, you know, that I walk, walk up beside my wife or, you know, that my children are doing well and they're healthy or, mm. you know, just a little thing. But you just express that appreciation, suddenly you realise is not as all as bad as it might seem mm -hmm. and that actually good things are happening did happen do happen will happen. will happen and you know you put your energy and your effort in again you rise up again and have another day of just plugging it pressing in for what you need um, and you know your dreams are going to come true that's right thank you guys so much for watching and Richable TV today. You've been listening to Omar Zach Phillips and you've been listening to Rachel Abel Phillips. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel where we can bring you some more great tips and advice 
on building your business, your brand and your career as an entrepreneur. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.